boys today. We are doing something different. I'm gonna rank the best conventional reels, put them in a tier list. I have a breadth of knowledge in this category, mainly because I worked on the West Coast for a while, the West Coast of the United States, not West Coast of Florida. And the way they use reels and the brands of reels that they use is much different than over here. Their kind of deal is Avid's, Okuma's, and Accurate's full speed ahead with a little Shimano pulled in. For the most part, that's what they do. Being in the charter industry for over nine years, you see a lot of reels. You see them used a whole lot of different ways. And I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what these reels can do. I think if you're wondering about what reel to get, I'm gonna shine a little light on each of these reels that I'm categorizing. Categorizing? Categorizing? Categorizing, words are hard. Look, just give me a break, okay? I just, I just recorded a 53 minute video of doing this um, and the audio was completely scuffed. I was talking and I was like, my mouth's like this, like, hello. So yeah, that sucks. So I'm get, I get to spend another 50 minutes doing this. I've seen all kinds of reels and I've seen them used a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, whether it be live bait, bottom fishing, uh, casting lure, surface irons, wahoo bombs, etc. Uh, I've seen all these reels used different ways trolling as well. Here's what we got going on. Got a nice tier list. Okay, to start off, I'm gonna do the trolling reels. I had it first categorized in, I had it in the, in the, what? I can't, words are tough for Joe today. In the first video I filmed, I categorized each reel by brand, but I think this makes more sense. I'm gonna start with all the trolling reels and then go on from there. Anyways, for starters, the classic, the Pen International. I'm gonna pull up pictures for you so you can see what it is because a teeny tiny little thumbnail don't really do it much. Boom, Pan International, beautiful reel. And you know what, I'm gonna do you one better. My face is in the way, you can't see this, can you? OBS magic, boom! Can I flip this? Dude, oh, I'm about to go so hard. So it looks like I'm looking at the thing. How do I do this? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Oh, that's the wrong thing again. Screw it, I'm just gonna do this. Whatever, if you don't like it. Oh, I can't though, because it's gonna block the tears. I'm trying to do this the best way possible, guys. All right, give me a break. I'm not like, uh, I'm a fisherman, not a uh, Twitch streamer. <laughs> Finally, first thing first, uh, Penn International, the classic. You know, a lot of you seen them like this, 50 wides. They are lifetime reels, really well made. You know, the OG uh, world record breaker reel. Whenever you see the black and white photos with the big giant marlin or bluefins or whatever, you see some dude in a button down and uh, long pants and holding gigantic rod with roller guides. World record, any shark, marlin, anything like that. Let's see, yep, look at that. Old white dude, Penn International. Big shark, Penn International. You can't see that. Look at that, big shark. Pen International. Uh, white Marlin. Small Pen International? Surprising. New Pen International, 898. Wow, junior record, pretty cool. I haven't caught, I wanna catch one that big. How many inches? Uh, it's like 106, seven inches, something like that. All of these old black and white pictures with dudes. <clears throat> see, Pen International, a bow? This dude shot a Mako with a bow. Okay, I'm, I'm going on too long of a tangent. What is this? A seven gill shark? Uh, Thresher, Penn International, imagine that. You get the point. So, like one of the OG, OG reels, right? The old ones are timeless reels. People still use them today, but not for super serious stuff. They're finally starting to get cycled out uh, just because they are not starting to get 20, 30 years old. Uh, the classic reel. It is really good. However, this is one of the reels I don't have a ton of experience with. I've used them a couple times, high speed trolling for Wahoo. Aside from that, I haven't used like the brand new ones. They're really cool. Uh, I have a buddy that catches grouper with the 50 wide. You know, it is a solid reel. However, I do think there's better options out there uh, for the price, but uh, that's, uh, I'm gonna put that solid A. I mean, it's a good reel. Yeah, solid A tier. Next is, uh, next is a reel you see me use a lot is the Avid's 50s and 80s, and they also just started making a 130. These are really good reels. So the boat I worked on on the West Coast was sponsored by Abbott. So this is what we use for our kite reels. When you're at Guadalupe dealing with yellowfin tuna up to 150 pounds, we use the 50 wide or the 50 narrow, the regular 50. And then uh, if we we're like kite fishing with the flying Jesus, the gummy, the yummy flyer or whatever, literally having it almost a mile behind the boat, use 50 wide. You really want an 80 for that, but uh, the really solid reels. I like them a lot. Obviously, all the bluefin videos, half of our reels are Avid reels. I think they're really solid. They're good pieces of equipment. This exact reel is a 50 wide. That's the one I caught that big 35 pound broomtail on. We also caught two 100 pound golf grouper on that back to back. It's a solid reel. I almost bought one as my grouper reel. Solid reel, lots of drag, very light. It doesn't have the same line capacity as a Tiagra. The only issue I have with it, it has a really, really touchy drag. Nonetheless, very, very solid reel. Well made. 
Um, it's definitely the best thing that Avid has to offer. I'm gonna put that, I'll probably put that above the International. Okay, next, we're back to Pen. Pen Squall. This is Pen's answer to the Shimano TLD 2 speed. That is their, that is their lower end version of their trolling reel. I do not like these reels at all. These reels will be fine for Mahi or trolling meat, uh, like up to six knots or whatever. These reels are probably the worst in terms of the amount of power they have. They don't have a ton of line capacity. I think people in Jacksonville get suckered into buying these especially because all we really do here is high speed. For Wahoo, they just don't really have enough power to do that. You can barely get by with a TLD 50 for that. I've done it before, but it's really, you know, it's pretty, that's about the bottom of the line. I think people get suckered in to, you know, trying to ball on a budget with Wahoo fishing. And you really, if you're Wahoo fishing, first of all, it is so expensive to do. You might as well just use the extra $300 and get a real reel. Yeah, I mean, these are just kind of bottom of the line. I feel, I would feel comfortable meat fishing with them. Uh, like I said, up to six knots. But the Squall 50 wides are definitely the worst reel for the big game stuff. It's just, you know, there's so much better options out there. I'll put it in D tier. Next is really one of the best reels made right now. It is the Tiagras, obviously made by Shimano. These reels are the best in the market right now. Easy S tier, you know, you go to all, you see all the bluefin boys out there on, in North Carolina, 90% of what they have are the Tiagra 80 wides and the Tiagra 130s. Yeah, these reels are awesome. Not a lot goes wrong with them. Super solid, definitely a lifetime reel. They are expensive, but they're worth the money. They're not overly ridiculously expensive. Probably the best reel made. The weight of them is very heavy, but with that weight comes the best power, the best made reel, and the most line capacity. So that is easy, easy S tier. Tiagras are some of the best reels in the market. All right, sticking with Shimano. We are going to the Tyrannos. This is a reel that I am actually, what is this? Is it a Pokemon? So this is a reel that I'm not sure why Shimano still makes. It's still in production. I've used this several times. I think the only time these are used, uh, people billfish with them still. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, it comes with a short handle. It doesn't come with a power handle. It doesn't have a ton of power. They're not big reels. They're not super fast. They are two speed. They got that going for them. But I think they're really a better charter reel than anything else. Like if you're if you're sail fishing or something in South Florida, I think that's a pr probably good option for that. If you want a bigger reel to sail fish with and you're really balling on the budget because there's a lot of people in like little bay boats and stuff that you can charge it out there. You're only going like a mile or two offshore in South Florida. Uh, but I think this reel is, there's just, there's just so many better options. And I can't believe Shimano still makes this. Uh, oh, I said there's no power handle, but I guess their big ones have power handles now, they're fifties, but whatever. But I don't I don't get this reel. I don't get it, man. Uh, it's, I really think that there's just so much better to offer. This is also gonna go in D. I would rather have a TLD 30 or um, an Avid 30 wide or, or an older, I would I would probably prefer one of the old Penn Internationals to these reels, I guess, I don't know. Like I said, there's a use for everything, but I just don't, I don't get that reel. Next is what I mentioned before, the TLD 30s and 50s and whatnot. Oh, I forgot to mention, I was gonna make note of which ones I've owned or which ones I own. I own three of these. I own a Tiagra 50, I've owned a Tiagra 80, and I technically kind of owned the Avid 30s and uh, 50. TLD, it's a really good, it's probably your best in terms of balling on a budget. They're not super duper expensive. Uh, they are good reels. A little bit on the edge for um, high speed Wahoo trolling. They have enough power to do it, but it's really not your ideal reel for it. They're made of plastic. They're solid, they have issues. Overall, it's a pretty decent reel. It's much better than the Squall and the Tyrannos, in my opinion. Uh, I think this is gonna go, so I think I'm gonna put the TLD 50 and 30 in probably like a high C, I guess. Like I said, there's, well, I don't know, man. Cause you can, cause you can do, you can do some pretty good stuff with these. I guess it's gonna be a low B. That's probably gonna be the end of the B. Pretty decent reel, ball on a budget reel. But again, there's much better options. Next, going in the world of Okuma. Okuma is 90% a uh, West Coast reel. Everybody on the West Coast uses those. They're super, really, super really common used and their popularity has been exploding because the stuff they make is awesome. I think you're gonna start seeing uh, a lot more of these reels on the East Coast of the United States. I love these reels. One reason being is they have a super long power handle 
They've got a really good stock handle on them. The, th the kicker for these things, they're super light. They are unbelievably light. They have all sizes, you know, your 30s all the way to your 130s. I love these reels. If I'm outfitting a boat for myself, there's a really good chance that I, I get these, especially if I'm bluefin fishing. They're really awesome reels. I love them. Uh, easy A. Easy A. You're going to see a lot more of these in the future. Okay, now we're done with our big giant trolling reels. We're going to go to the smaller reels. To stay on topic, the Makara 15. This is one of the better reels made right now, I think. Tons of these were used um, on the West Coast. Super popular reel. These reels were great for casting. Awesome power. They come with a sick power handle, super long handle, two speed. These reels have tons and tons of range. We use these things from uh, trolling marauders for Wahoo, uh, trolling for tuna. The 15s are great for fly lining, great for casting surface irons, great for Wahoo bombs. There's just so many options. They can handle so much. We caught some 100 pound yellowfin on the fifth, uh, on this specific reel right here, the 15 two. Uh, I love these reels. Uh, for the East Coast, I, I would love to get one of these as a uh, like a mutton reel, a reel for small groupers. There's, there's so much you can do with these reels. I love these reels. I really encourage you guys to try this out. If you're looking for a good two speed or uh, something with a lot of power, uh, this is definitely a reel to look into. I absolutely love these reels. I will own one of these reels one day. I think this is an S, easy S. Like I said, you're gonna start seeing a lot more of these on the East Coast of the United States just because they're such a well-made reel. It probably has the most range in terms of what you can do with it um, than any other reel in the market, I think. Okay, next reel, the classic, Penn Senator. You know, one of the OG reels. This used to be one of those reels that everybody had. It's just a solid-made reel. They've been making it forever. There's a reason it's been in production for over 50 years. These reels are bulletproof, man. This is what we use in the party boats. Four outs is the reel that we use on the party boat, and they get abused, man. They get used by 47 to 50 people that that don't know how to fish and don't know how to take care of stuff every single day. They don't get washed well. The drags stay hammered down. We never back them off. Very, very minimal problems. It's a really solid reel. For people getting into bottom fishing, this isn't a bad option. It's a really affordable reel. It's only a hundred bucks. You know, it'll last you a long, long time. It's really hard for it to have issues. There are reels with more power. Yeah, it is kind of a slow reel. Yeah, for what it is and its price, there's not much better than a four op. Uh, the six aughts are incredible reels. Uh, you'll see in a video that I'm going to post, I think the next, or it's either going to be the next one or the one after that. I'm going to post a video of us catching a Goliath grouper in 180 feet of water on a store-bought stock six aught. Those reels have tons of power, uh, tons of drag. They can be abused as well. You can have them. They'll work great for 10, 15 years. That is going to be a B tier pretty solid reel. Next, we are sticking with the Senator, but the U.S. Senator. So the U.S. Senators, this is the new Pen Baja. You guys in the West Coast know these. They're the upgraded version of the Pen 4 out. They only make 4 outs. They have a narrow, a regular, and a wide. I have outfitted three different boats this past year, and for the bottom fishing reels, uh, for people just getting into it, this reel is awesome. This reel has a lot more power than the regular Senators. It is completely stainless steel, sealed well everything's made out of metal it has a really good handle um bigger handle than the regular four uh, it's much faster too i think this is a really really good reel for the new boat we got for our company chad asked me what reels i wanted to get for bottom fishing and i chose these these would be a good reel for like big red snapper your mutton snapper mangrove snapper and small grouper they are kind of heavy for bottom fishing but i mean for a charter reel you really can't get anything better than this i think they're like 250 yeah 250 bucks i like these reels a lot uh just like the pen baja i've never cast it with them so i don't know anything about that for you west coast people but uh this is going to be a high b because uh it is still kind of an entry level reel it has a lot of range there is a lot of stuff that you can get that is better than this for each thing but for like a pretty inexpensive reel and what it can do, it's a pretty solid reel. So solid B. Um, next reel is the Pen Squall Lever Drag. Smaller version, not the 50 wide. So we use these for kingfish. The 30s, we use the 30s for kingfish. They go up to a 60. They're awesome kingfish reels. We abuse them. You know, they get fished well over 150, 200 times a year. I caught a 40 pound kingfish on it the other day. I've caught a 42 before. They last a long time. We abuse those reels. If you're looking to get a set of kingfish reels, for a boat, an entire set. This is definitely something that you should consider. Probably the best entry level kingfish reel on the market, the 30s are. They definitely get the job done. I've seen people bottom fish with the bigger ones, the 50s and 60s. They do sometimes have lever drag issues, but not very commonly. And they're like pretty much mainly plastic, but really good reels nonetheless. Probably put those, uh, you know, mid B. 
They're solid reels. Yeah. Solid and affordable. That's a good entry level reel. Um, if, if you only kingfish a couple times a year and you want a whole set, that'd be something to look into. Next is the Pen Fathom, the One Speeds. If you've watched my videos, we have used these on the boat a lot. Um, they're decent. They don't have a ton of drag. They are advertised kind of falsely in terms of the amount of drag they have. They're a faster reel. Uh, they struggle with big snapper. They definitely struggle with grouper. You could probably catch some small mangoes on it. Like you South Florida people, it'd be a, it'd be a decent reel for muttons for the size of muttons you guys have down there. It casts okay for you California people. I think you could, you could pass it as a surface iron reel. You know, it's kind of basic. It does have a lot of issues. I have had a, quite a few of these reels have bearing issues and drag issues. It is a plastic reel. It's, it's decent, but I think what you can do with it is pretty you know narrow it doesn't have that much range as a reel so i'm gonna put that in a c tier next is the fathom two speed this is very different when i say pens we're using the west coast 90 percent of those pens were this reel right here we caught a lot of big yellowfin on them a lot of guys use them for uh fly lining for the yellowfin some people use them for casting surface irons a lot of people use them mainly for uh wahoo bomb fishing things like that they actually have a really good amount of power i think it's a better made reel uh, there's more drag overall better reel than the single speed if you're gonna get a fathom, I wouldn't even mess around with a single speed. This is a much better made reel. So this is gonna go, this is gonna go in a high B. Uh, pretty solid reel. Next, next is a reel that I own. It's called the Pen Torque. And uh, this reel, I got some, so I got something to say about this reel. So Pen should be sued for false advertisement for this reel, for what it's named. For a reel that's called the Pen Torque, one would think that it would have a ton of power and a ton of drag. I tell you what, folks, it does not. This reel sucks. I got one six or seven years ago, and I always had wanted to get one as soon as Penn announced that they were coming out with a pen torque. When I was a kid and Bass Pro sent catalogs out every single year uh, for the saltwater stuff, which actually I think they still do. They're like the only company that actually sends out stuff like that. Uh, I always wanted one. You know, they're pretty. They're that classic Penn International Gold. They got a sick name. And so anyways, they got a lot of power and they're a great reel, but these things are actual garbage. I'd rather have a fathom than this reel. Do not like this reel at all. It doesn't have enough power for a red snapper. It doesn't have enough power for grouper. It doesn't have enough power for big muttons. You can kind of get away with it. For mangoes and stuff like that, I use it right now for beeliner fishing. I hate this reel. I'm very upset for what I paid for it. I almost paid $500 for this reel. I am very disappointed in Penn for this reel. Like I need to make a new, I need to make a new tier actually for this uh, add row below we're going to change it to pink for how soft it is and name this tier awful and pentor goes right there do not buy a pentor they suck next reel this is where you west coast people might get a little mad at me accurate reels accurate is a very solid reel company however for what you're paying for and the size of the reel and what it can do and the issues that they have i do not like accurate the affordable ones are the fury twos and the turns, you see a lot of those. There's a guy in St. Augustine that uses the Furies and swears by them. But there's people that are crazy about these reels on the West Coast. Like we'd have people come on the long range boat that would have six or eight of these things, only fish a couple times a year. And even though they only fish maybe 20 days out of the year, every single year they have to send them back into Accurate to get a full service and bearing replacements or the reel will essentially fall apart. For the size of the reel and what you pay for it, uh, I don't really think Accurate's worth it. And I know it's going to piss a lot of people off, but, uh, you know, stuff, there's some stuff that just doesn't make sense. They're super light. That's cool. They have decent amount of drag. That's cool. The handles on these reels suck. I hate the handles. Shimano has a very similar handle, but for whatever reason, the Shimano handle is very comfortable. These handles are very uncomfortable for the amount of power that you need to turn it. Not a huge accurate fan. Sorry. I'm just not. I'm not a huge fan. I'm going to put these at a high C. I just think for the amount of money that you can spend for a reel that does the same thing, uh, you can get a much more reliable reel and and not pay as much and not have to service it. So, sorry. Avid, another super popular reel. People use them over here on the East Coast a lot too, but it's, it's mainly predominantly on the West Coast. Avid reels are, you kind of have to understand them. It's confusing. You got five subcategories and in each of those, there's four kinds of reels inside each kind of reel. So it's like you have your columns would be the kind of reel, their SX, MX, LX, HX. And then the categories would be their single speed, regular, their generation two G2s, 
the MC Cast, and then the Raptor. Each are exponentially more expensive and a better reel. The standard ones that don't have anything else in them, they're no addition, those reels suck. Do not touch those reels. They're really affordable and they're really pretty, you get all kinds of nice colors, but they're pretty terrible reels. The G2s, they have an improved drag. They're slightly better than the original ones, but still not that great of reel. The MC Cast, the MC Cast has the G2 drag, but it also has a mag on the side with a dial, so it casts a lot better uh, for you surface iron people, and it has a little bit more drag. You can handle Yellowtail pretty well, California Yellowtail. You might be able to handle smaller muttons and mangoes down South Florida, uh, but the best one by far, by far is the Raptor. It is not even close. It is leaps and bounds ahead of the MC cast. It has a very powerful drag. It has the mag dial. It is by far the superior reel for Avid. If you're gonna buy an Avid, don't even touch the other three categories. Just get the Raptor. It's, one, it's much more expensive, but you get what you pay for, especially with the Raptor. So the way I'm gonna categorize these, I have two Avid logos here. So like they're Raptors, probably mid B, and and the lower end ones are a D tier. I don't even know why they bother making the smaller reels. They just suck. I just They just don't have drag or power. And you get what you pay for. Pay for the Raptor if you're gonna get an Avid. Okay, next up is the Shimano Talica. One of the better reels on the market right now. So the 25s are really good mahi reels, good sailfish reels, good bottom fishing reels, same with the 20s. The smaller ones are awesome fly lining reels for yellow fin and whatnot. They're really fun to use. I'll probably eventually get like a 10. Really, really fun to use. Overall, really, really good reel. Has a lot of power. The only issue is with the bottom fishing, especially the kind that we do, which is lockdown drag. If you use these with braid and the cam all the way hammered down, uh, that's not really what these reels were designed to do. Uh, you will blow them up if you put too much heat on them. But aside from that, they're really, really good reels. Probably one of the better reels in the market. I'm gonna slide her in S tier. Right up there, boom. Next is the sister reel to the Talca, the Speedmaster. All of us know the original Speedmaster was a Star Drag Kingfish reel. It was really like the OG Kingfish reel. They remade it. The one thing they kept was the name. That's a completely different reel. It's a lever drag, it's two speed. Uh, I love these reels. They're super affordable, much less expensive than the Talica. They have tons of power. I think it'd be a really good bottom fishing reel. Obviously a good king fishing reel, a uh, sailfish reel too. I love this reel a lot. I think Shimano did a really, really good job coming out with the reel that was a like one step below the Talica. Uh, I love it. This is a easy A. Easy A for me. Really, really solid reel. Next is the Osea Jigger. Probably the best slow pitch reel on the market. Uh, this is one that I haven't used yet, but from what I hear, it's a pretty solid reel. It has a really cool feature that there's a little thing that you push on the side that just stops the drag from being pushed out, just a lockdown. I think that's really cool. I, I'm surprised more reels have not come out with that. It has a super long power handle and a sick power handle grip. It's, it's a light reel. It's pretty expensive. Probably leaves and bounds the best slow pitch jig on the market. Really cool reel. I would probably put that Probably in a, a low A for what it is. It's It doesn't have much range. It's, it's made for slow pitch jigging. That's kind of the issue with all the slow pitch tackle. It really only has one use. I mean, you could like use it to flatline stuff, but their rods and stuff, like it's really made just for slow pitch. So a low A is what I'm putting it as. Next is the original Shimano TLDs. So this is another reel that is, you know, it's good enough. It's a affordable reel. That's not what I wanted. It's an affordable reel. Single speed version of the two speed that I talked about earlier. I'm kind, I'm still kind of surprised that Shimano makes these. There's so much more better options. I've used the 25 a lot when I was growing up, just because it was affordable. I think you can get a reel that is better for what you want at the same price. I, I'm kind of surprised they still make these. I think this is a pretty low tier. I mean, it's one of the OGs, but I think that's a solid D. Whatever. Next is the Torium. This is Shimano's like middle of the line star drag reels. They work great. I like the smaller ones a lot. Uh, they're really good for fly lining if you're free California people. Decent, you know, mutton snapper, mangrove snapper reels. Great for bee liners, etc. trigger fish. These reels do have a lot of range and I like them a lot, but they're better star drag reels that Shimano makes and much better star drag reels on the market. So I put the Torium Probably, you know, towards the end, B, solid reel. Really good reel, but there's better options. The best star drag reel that Shimano makes is the Trinidad. I've used this quite a bit. I don't personally own one. It is a very good reel. Um, has a good amount of power. Can definitely handle red snapper. 
uh, muttons and uh, smaller grouper. Uh, you know, it's it's a really good reel. I like it a lot. It has a lot of range. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. I like it. It's a good reel. I think it's this one's a, uh, probably on the other end, a higher B. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I probably put it higher B. It's all real. It doesn't have the most power in the world, but it's definitely a really good option. Next is a convent is like a casting reel, but for what you can catch with it, it, it kind of is in this category. So the big tranks, uh, this is one of the most popular reels on the West Coast. It's an awesome reel. So this is probably the best surface iron reel. Um, you can cast it a mile. It has tons of power, tons and tons of power. This is also a very good Wahoo bomb reel. There's a lot of Wahoo caught on these on the West Coast. The application for it over here, this would be an awesome reel to uh, throw lures to catch big tarpon and big snook. For fly lining and flat lining, uh, I don't really know. This is really isn't the best option. I like an open face reel for that. It does have minimal range, but for what it's used for, it is so perfect. It is beautiful for that. For lure throwing for big fish, awesome. I think this is an easy A. Uh, I think this is an easy A. Really, really solid reel. Definitely perfect for what it's made for. Okay, and that rounds out the Shimano, and we're going to Daiwa. And this is Daiwa's answer to the Tranks. It is a Daiwa Alexa. Similar size, a little bit smaller. It has less power. It casts uh, just as well. Awesome casting reel. You could handle bigger tarpon, probably up to like 100 pounds on it. It would be a struggle, but you could do it. I've seen Wahoo get caught on this reel. Uh, this is this would be a great surface iron reel for uh, California yellowtail. It's a really good all around solid reel. Probably have one of these reels one day. Have like an eight and a half foot rod, braid, whatever to cast. But uh, super solid reel. Definitely not as good as the Tranks, but you know it's a solid B for what it's for what it's worth. Oh yeah, I'll put it at the end of the B. Next is the Saltiga. Saltigas are by far the best star drag on the market. These reels are awesome. Jonathan just bought one. Bo's had one for a long time. I'm super impressed of the power of these, the speed, just really, really well-made reels. Another reel I'll probably have very soon. You know, this handles big muttons super well. Uh, you can handle, you can catch grouper on them. Just an awesome reel. You could cast super well with these things, I'm sure. This would be an awesome surface iron reel. Great for Wahoo bombs, etc. I love these reels. This is definitely a reel I'm gonna buy. This one's an S tier for me, for sure. Uh, I love, I love these reels. And their their lever drags are really good too. I've never used a lever drag, but still a similar reel. Lots of power, lots of speed. Uh, not very heavy. Awesome reel. And to finish this off, the Saltist. The Saltist is probably one of the better entry level reels there is. They have a star drag and a lever drag similar to the Saltiga. They're not very expensive, like 200 bucks. If you're looking to dip your toe into the beginning of the higher end reel market. This is a really good reel to buy to kind of feel out what you want in terms of a star drag or a lever drag. It handles big snapper well enough. It'll struggle with grouper. Um, it does have a lot of range. You could cast with it pretty well, flat line with it well. Uh, I like it a lot. I For the price and its performance, I will put this at like a mid B probably. Middle of the line B. I've used Saltus a lot. I've used, every, I've owned every single generation of this reel, and uh, it does have issues. It will kind of break every now and then, but a pretty solid reel. So there you have it. There is your reels tier list right there. Leave a comment below if you think I left a reel out or. I didn't rank a reel right or opinions you have, let me know. If you used any of these reels for something specific and a reel that works really well for a certain fishery, I would love to hear it. Um, I think it's really interesting when people use reels for certain fisheries and they're just that reel. There's a couple reels that, that I use I know that are just perfect for the kind of fishing I do for that specific fishery. So I'd love to hear that, please let me know. If you like the content, please subscribe. It's free and it helps me out a lot. I'd love to see you guys again. Thanks for watching as always. Love you guys. I'll see you all next time.